Okay, the next thing here we've got is the marking criteria, and I will go through this now. Um, you notice that question one, which asks, which is about the aim, asks you to do two things. Clearly state the problem and suggest a use for your results. Two marks if you can do both of those things. Just one mark if you just clearly state the problem. Zero if neither of those is present. Moving on to question two, the information is summar summarised that is summarised is relevant and it is explained. The information shows understanding of content and they are referenced according to the Clancy um, referencing policy. One mark in total there. And remember, you need to have two sources, okay? So to get the full marks for that, you need to have two sources. I'd be suggesting that if you only do one source, you will be giving you half a mark, and you do it correctly, we'll be giving you half a mark for each of those. Uh, question three, which talks about the equipment. If you list all the equipment and justify why you have used each bit, then you get three marks. Uh, anything less than that, just the equipment listed, two marks, and uh, only partially done would be only worth one mark. Moving on to question four, which talks about the variables. All three types of variable are identified, the independent, the dependent, and the controlled variables. Okay, a description of how you will measure the dependent variable, okay, also included, and how variables will be controlled, and you have also at the end got to include a control as well, or show how you are going to include a control there as well. Now you notice there are three things to do here, that's three marks, here's your fourth one, uh, with that, how you'll measure the independent variable. Fifth one there is about how variables will be controlled, and the last one, sixth one, is the control. So that's six marks in total. Now if you do any five of the above, five marks, any four of the above, four marks, and so on. If you don't do any of those, it'll be zero. Uh, moving on now to question five, the method outlines. Now notice so I'm using these words again, clear, safe, and logical procedural, and it's got to be plausible as well. So it is. So I guess logical and plausible, plausible, similar in that they should. It should be realistic. And finally, this last bit here, which I've mentioned a few times now, is about it being detailed enough. You need to include enough detail there. Again, we've got one, two, three, four, and five things that need to be included there for a total of five marks. Any four of them, it'll be less. Four, three, two, one. Uh, as described there. Question six, almost to the end of the, uh, the uh, part one now. Uh, if you make an educated guess and it is based on your background research, so it'd be really great if you could mention some of your research that you did in question two there. Um, two marks if you make an educated guess that is based on background research and you'll need to mention the background research because how else will we know that you have actually based it on the background research. Uh, a guess made just the one mark and no attempt, obviously zero. And question seven, just one mark for establishing an appropriate timeline. And I think one of the other things about your timeline is that when you come to doing that, we might be able to help you out with some advice if we think you might be rushed for time. Um, so that's a main reason for really doing a timeline so that we can have a look and see that you have planned effectively and that there's not um, any advice that we can give you that might help you out there. So now we move on to part two. Obviously the first part of part two is conducting your experiment. Um, even if you are doing one of the ones that's going to take a little bit longer time to um, conduct your experiment, like anything where you are growing plants or anything like that, um, you've got the two weeks of the holidays to be able to spend a fair bit of time on that. So take care when conducting your experiment and just make sure you're following your instructions. Now, the next couple of bits, the aim, I guess the apparatus and the method, um, diagram results and it also the conclusion are fairly similar to what we usually do. There's probably only a couple of exceptions there. The hypothesis you basically should have already done uh, from part one. So you can just include that there as well. Also the aim, also the apparatus. I guess the big change here is this one here. Make sure that you add any improvements that were suggested at your interview with your teacher, okay? Your method, we are going to be able to compare your method from part one to your method to part two. Um, and I think it would be worthwhile also for you to highlight um, like either by using italics or by using bold um, 
to highlight some of the changes that you made or the suggestions that you took on board. Uh, part of being a good research scientist is taking advice from people and um, trying to improve your experimental design with in consultation with other people and that's why we want you to do um, that part of your assessment there. As I said, diagram results fairly um, familiar to what you usually do. However, you can include photographs in your um, results there, and I think it would definitely be appropriate to include tables, okay? But it's observations only. You're not analyzing your results because you're an analyzing your results in the discussion, okay? So you're taking your results, and I think when we get down to the marking criteria, you'll be able to see some of those uh, things that you can do in your discussion, which might make it really high quality. Um, also, you, are there any improvements, um, were you to ca carry out the experiment again, are there any improvements that you could suggest there? And recommendations for further research, so moving on toward, like you've done your experiment and you've um, learnt something hopefully from doing your experiment, but where does that lead to? Um, you know, in science, uh, we tend to have ideas building on other ideas, so after your experiment, what do you think is another um, problem that someone could investigate and perhaps we might even give that to the year nines when they do that next year so that they can uh, do your, your um, suggested research. Okay, so, and finally, conclusion. Uh, again, very familiar to what we do. Remember when you're doing a conclusion, we need to refer back to the aim there, of course, as well. Now, when it comes time to um, writing up your final report after you have conducted your experiment, You'd want to include a title, um, the aim, again, fairly familiar, you can just fill in the gaps there. Hypothesis, uh, you can just copy and paste back to your own, your original hypothesis there. And you will also notice there that there's a bit about was your prediction correct. Um, so you can just add a little bit in there as well. Apparatus, almost exactly the same as well, so you can just copy and paste that from part one. Method. Uh, I guess the big difference here, and you'll notice that it's in italics and bold here as well, make sure you include any improvement suggested by your teacher, okay? Um, and I suggest that when you do that, you use uh, bold or italics or underlining it or something like that so that we know where you've made your improvements. We will, we'll be able to check anyway, uh, but it will be a lot more obvious for us if you can do it in bold or italics or in underline, okay? So there's your steps again, very similar. You can copy and paste, obviously, uh, a diagram here of your experiment. Notice that to do that, you need to draw a diagram, or you can supply a photograph as well. Photograph is fine in this case. Um, don't waste too much money, though, on printing out thousands of photos uh, for your diagram there. Use a ruler and pencil if you're gonna draw it and label the diagram. Also, no one will be disadvantaged if they do draw it instead of um, supplying a photograph, but it certainly is easier for you if you do do a photograph. Uh, the results, show your results uh, below. You need to use tables and graphs, or you can use tables and graphs. Um, actually, that's probably not 100% correct. The graph, I think I said the other day, should be in the discussion as well. So um, I might just change that um, as well, put that into the you might just copy and cut and paste that into the discussion, the graph there, because that's in the wrong section. Um, you need to use tables. Uh, include, Make sure you include units there as well, whether your, your results are in kilograms or centimetres or whatever they might.